Gents, I will explain you something about the DP system. If you read the manual, then you get bored because it's everything in general and explained how a DP model works and how the vessel keeps the position. Now, follow me in this small presentation about how the vessel is really holding the position. Are you a DPO? You drive the ship? Or is the ship driving you? That we will find out. Follow me. Hi, my name is Ivan Pagnini and also the ladies are welcome to this uh, short introduction to dynamic positioning block diagram. It is still simplified and here only one possible implementation of it. In this schematic, the input of from the dynamic positioning operator, in short DPO, is marked with the green circle. And in pink, we have the common filter and the model works. In this first movie, I want to give you an overview of how the DP system controlling the vessel position in the axis search, which is uh, back and forth, in sway, uh, which is sideways, and yaw, which is the heading in a horizontal plane. Later, if you want to know more in details of each of the areas, uh, you can watch uh, the other lectures of this series. As we all know, a seagoing vessel is subject of forces from wind, waves, current, as well as from forces generated by the propulsion system. The wind is the only, the only environment force which is measured and used by the TP system to calculate with help of a wind vessel model the wind force. Then, in order to counteract changes in the wind forces, as soon as they are detected, rather than first allowing the vessel to drift away from the required position, the calculated external force are feed forward to the thrust allocation. The thrust allocation turns the force information into thruster commands, like RPM, load, pitch, set points for each thruster. The set point are then sent to the power overload control, which checks whether there is enough power available to avoid a blackout. Then, if approved, the set point is forwarded to the thrusters, where finally the thruster physically counteracts the external force. The feedback from the thruster, like RPM, load, pitch, are then converted in the thruster model to force, so called thruster force, normally tons in search and sway and tons per meter for yaw and sent to the vessel model. The vessel model is an estimator. In order to give a good prediction, the estimator collects all relevant data. Now, in our example, the vessel knows the wind force and that the thruster ha force has contracted for it. So the vessel model would think the vessel is stationary. But now, the measured position is coming in from one of the position reference systems. We say another position, let's say one meter off. This residual goes then into the Kalman filter, where the Kalman gain will determine how much it will trust the measurement and how much it will trust the estimation from the model. Let's say the Kalman gain is 0.5, which means the Kalman filter believes the measurement half and half the estimation. In our example, with one meter off, that means that now the new estimate will be a position which is half a meter next to the previous estimated position. Now, the vessel has a problem. Because some unknown force pushed the vessel half a meter off position. The DP system calculates now the error force which lets the vessel move. This so-called current, environment force or error force depends on your manufacturer, are then passed through a filter with a long filter time and then feed forward like the wind to the thrust allocation. Due to the model update, in the next estimated vessel position will be half a meter away from the set point. Now the automatic access control will apply a force demand that is proportional to the deviation between the estimated position and the position set point. Same applies for the heading. Basically, the gain will try to force the vessel back into position. In our example, let's say the gain is 4 tons per meter offset. 
the estimated vessel position is now 0.5 meters away from the set point and therefore it will apply 2 tons to get back to the set point. Since the vessel has moved within one calculation circle 0.5 meters, the vessel model can now easily calculate the estimated speed. This one is then compared with the wanted speed. If the vessel is meant to maintain stationary, the wanted speed will be always zero. This comparison is then used in the dumping control to calculate the force demand which is proportional to the deviation between the wanted and the actual speed. As soon as we have vessel speed and direction, we have then the so-called so drag force. Because the vessel is floating in the water and, it, and if it moves, the resistance of the water will set up a force into the opposite direction of the motion. The drag force is an important factor in the calculation of an accurate vessel speed. In summary, we have all resulting forces to be produced by the thrusters for the vessel to remain stationary. That's first the feed forward consisting from the wind force and the aero force and secondly the automatic demand which is the gain and the damping control and optional third the manual control which is the joystick. When any of the axes are not under automatic control you can use the joystick to manually control the force applied by the thruster in those axes. Looking closer to the position reference system. The raw data coming in is pre-processed, like conversion to common format and datum, correction for the offset and motion compensation. After the pre-processing, the DP system performs a series of tests on each position reference system to check if their position measurements are accurate enough to be used. Further, the DP system assigns different weight to each DP reference system based on the calculated variance. In this way, the system is able to place more embassy on the position reference system that are providing the best measurements. The higher the system variance, the lower the weight factor. This measured, validated and weighted vessel position are then compared in the Kalman filter with the estimated vessel position, as discussed before. Depends on which type of work the DP vessel is doing, there are special DP operational modes where external forces are measured and feed forward. For example, pipeline edge lay and in JLA, respectively bottle frame and ultra heavy lift with the topside lift system. Have a look at the other movies if you are interested in it. There are more lectures of this series about wind, thruster, Kalman filter and error computation, controller like gain, dumping, drag and joystick, signal pre-processing, test of position reference system, pipeline edge lay, pipeline JLA, respective portal frame and ultra heavy lift with the topside lift system. Alright, that's from now. I hope you know more about the DP block diagram. Bye, see you next time.